a very important topic like if hepatitis b or hvsg positive patients visit to our opd i mean they can come to uh, general practitioners physicians and varied other specialties so how to manage these cases is a important question what investigations we have to do and how to counsel the patient the family i'm going to do in the next few slides is uh, uh, go into the very basics of hepatitis b and its aftermath once a patient gets it so at the outset i would like to ask amongst the uh, audience or the august gathering who have come on this uh, webinar who all are vaccinated against hepatitis b virus and if at all if they have been vaccinated i mean only hvs tests so regarding this i'll be uh, asking in the at the end of the uh, talk so one has to be the uh, the very basic about this slide is that one has to be vaccinated about this deadly virus second is not only that they have to know their anti hvs titers also and as we know july 28th is world hepatitis day it is celebrated all over the uh, world and this is in memory of uh, professor bloomberg who discovered this virus and his birthday falls on 28th july every year they have got a theme so uh, the july 28th we conduct uh, either the hepatitis b or c surveillance camps and vaccination of high risk group patients as you all know worldwide more than 400 million persons are chronically infected with this virus and why we are worried about this virus the carriers of this virus can develop cirrhosis and liver cancer we all concentrate on hiv and even the government schemes and everything and propaganda is about hiv but if you see this slide hepatitis b virus is 50 to 100 times more infectious than hiv and 10 to 20 times more infectious than hepatitis c virus there are two modes of transmission either it is perinatal or horizontal perinatal means from mother to child horizontal means between two individuals in is in uh, asian countries usual mode of transmission is perinatal but western countries it is more of horizontal transmission however of late we are seeing horizontal transmission in india also so how do they present i mean uh, the patients will not come and say that i have got hepatitis b unless we do the test so let's see some of the clinical scenarios this is very common goes for visa checkup he wants to go to gulf gets a visa checkup hvsg is positive otherwise his healthy liver functions are normal so what is this person to be labeled as he is nothing but asymptomatic hepatitis b in a inactive disease state or earlier what we used to call him as carrier state hepatitis b second scenario 28 year old pregnant lady jaundice altered sensorium coagulopathy enzymes are sky high this lady lands up with a gynecologist and igm anti hb core is positive so what is this lady suffering from it is fulminant hepatic failure third scenario is young adult or elder uh, middle aged adult with right upper, upper quadrant pain there is a mass lesion in the ultrasound afp is quite high he is also hbsg positive so this is a very straight forward case this person is having hepatocellular carcinoma so we have we have seen the varied presentation starting symptomatic or the carrier state to uh, fulminant hepatic failure and then the hepatocellular carcinoma so what exactly happens when the virus enters the body it all depends upon this part if it enters in the neonatal period 90 to 95% of the neonates will land up into chronic stage if proper precaution is not taken while for adults it is 5 to 10% and then the once chronic hepatitis b stage reached then there are various stages that is cirrhosis hepatocellular carcinoma decomposition and it there the interval between acute and chronic hepatitis b it should be 6 months 
I mean, we do a test today. We do it after six months. Both are positive. Then we can label this person as chronic hepatitis B. So HBSG positive patient has now entered our OPD, or we see in the rounds. So what all investigations uh, we advise them? We apart from the routine hemogram and liver function test, we advise the P T N R viruses because. C virus, HIV, and B virus. All these have got same mode of transmission, that is blood or blood products. So it is very important for us to know whether a person is mono infected or poly infected. I mean, it is a single virus infection or a combination of all three or two of them, because the prognosis and treatment varies. We need to get a simple ultrasound abdomen done to know whether any serotic changes have occurred or not. This is. is the chronic hepatitis b inactive disease inactive disease means as i mentioned earlier for chronicity hbsg has to be done at two intervals of 6 months duration and to call it as inactive disease the enzymes have to be normal that is sgot sgpt levels or alt ast level should be normal when we call it as active disease when apart from the 6 months interval when the enzymes that is alt ast rise more than two times the upper limit of normal we call it as active disease and these patients require treatment so why do we treat these patients we know that we will not be able to get rid out of this virus in toto at least we can reduce the burden as has been seen here and by doing so we can prevent the stages like from acute or chronic we can prevent him from going into decompensate compensated cirrhosis this is decompensated cirrhosis hcc by doing treating these patients at various intervals we can give them long term better survival so finally the question is who needs anti uh, hepatitis b treatment do all patients of hbsg who come to the opd do we treat them the answer is no we treat these only subset of patients in whom hbsg is positive sgpt is more than two times the upper limit of normal and nowadays the normal value for male is taken as 30 and females is 19 and this normal c varies according to european standard us standard and asia pacific standards so what are the modes of therapy what are the hbb uh, treatment options we have initially when treatment started we had the interferon that is in 1990 since then we have co come a long way and of late the two most important drugs what is used for treatment treating hepatitis b is tenofovir has got two molecules then is tenofovir alafenamide that is taf so friends as we have always been taught in medicine prevention is better than cure so why not prevent this disease rather than aiming to cure it when we know that we don't have a uh, 100% cure for this virus so friends hepatitis b can be prevented just by simple three doses of vaccination and by by uh, giving these vaccination we can prevent these b patient uh, or uh, uh, patients getting converted to hepatitis b and finally ending up with decompensated cirrhosis when they have the spider nevi palmer erythema ascites gynecomastia ictrus and clubbing so prevent all these complications of chronic hepatitis b it is better we vaccinate the household contact and others who are hbsg negative so finally who should get vaccination the answer is universal vaccination is the answer like healthcare workers patients who are on hemodialysis drug abusers homosexuals these patients should get vaccinated now what is the dose of vaccine advice it is very simple for immuno or adults immuno competent we give three doses 1 ml 0 1 and 6 months interval while for dialysis patients we give double dose that is 2 ml and one more extra dose is given 0 Uh, that is in between one extra that is four by giving three doses of vaccine 
we can get as high as 98 to 99 percent protection and the injection is given on the deltoid in adults and anterolateral aspect of the thigh in children because the deltoid is not developed or not very muscular in case of infants or children how safe are these virus vaccines They're very safe except for transient pain and low grade fever which is seen with any other vaccines no major ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿ mother so what do we do now so this is very important slide at birth hepatitis h big that is hepatitis b immunoglobulin has to be given to the child immediately after birth and vaccine one dose and this has to be followed by the regular vaccination schedule which is uh, advised by the iap indian association of pediatricians this immunoglobulin is the combination of vaccine and immunoglobulin is very effective it has got a protective value of almost 98 99% however one care has to be taken here is that we never know where the mother is going to for the delivery so it is always better they fix up a hospital for delivery and advise uh, take that uh, adv- uh, this one advice of the pediatrician keep immunoglobulin ready because deliveries happen at any time so this is very important mother hpc is positive for the child immediately after vaccine and immunoglobulin and next question common question what we are asked is is booster advised uh, after full dose of vaccination the answer is no provided patient is immunocompetent or the person is immunocompetent has received three doses of vaccine and has got protective antibody titer this slide this part is very important this uh, for this i had asked in the initial second or third slide how many of us, that is healthcare worker body titers so if all these three criteria are fulfilled then there is no need of booster and none of the societies that is uh, us canada or european society recommend booster however in asians if at all if someone needs a booster and if they don't know their anti hps titer it is better to take booster after 10 to 15 years of the primary vaccination now this slide is very important what should healthcare worker do if he gets exposed to hps hg positive patient it all depends upon knowing whether the healthcare worker has been vaccinated in the past or not so we can have three scenarios healthcare worker vaccinated in the past and know their anti hbs titer they have been vaccinated but don't know their anti hbs titer and third scenario is they have not been vaccinated so if person has been vaccinated and know their anti hbs titers then there is no need to do or no if has been vaccinated in the past and doesn't know their titers and gets a prick then what has to be done first the blood has to be drawn for hbs hg and anti hbs titers send the uh, send it for lab give one dose of vaccine here there is no harm in giving vaccine at this stage wait for the titers if the titers report comes as it is a good protective antibody titer then no need for further vaccination this is the most dangerous group healthcare worker not vaccinated and gets a prick of hbs hg positive patient then like what has been advised in for the hbs hg positive uh, mother uh, during delivery the same schedule goes for the healthcare worker who has not been vaccinated that means he, he or she has to take one dose of immunoglobulin with vac and vaccine three doses schedule problem here is the dose of immunoglobulin in adults or for uh, we give 0.0 ml per kg if we consider health healthcare worker as 50 kg the dose required will come 3 ml 
minimum so each ml costs around 7 to 8000 rupees so you can see the logistics here if person has not been vaccinated he or she will have to shell out 20 or 22000 rupees while if they would have come in this group there would hardly be any expenditure because nowadays we get vaccine as low as 50 to 75 rupees so three doses means hardly 200 rupees so we have a hbsg positive that is index case what advice should we give to the family members the answer is they all have to get screened for hbsg and whoever is negative should get vaccination immediately if they have not been vaccinated hepatitis b is a dynamic disease so and we treat around 40 45% of these cases however we never know whether a person who has come to our opd comes in this group or this group that's why we require monitoring and this monitoring is required because inactive disease may not remain inactive throughout and liver damage may occur if if it is be reactivates so we have to pick up the reactivation or the activation at the early stage and start treating that's why we advise certain tests at 3 month interval certain tests at 6 months and certain at yearly interval one has to be told at the first uh, consultation that hepatitis b can be controlled but cannot be cured this has to be emphasized to the patient and relatives that's why every 3 or 6 monthly monitoring is very important now what is the risk of perinatal transmission as i have shown in the slide earlier Uh, the risk actually increases during the labor or delivery and this is irrespective of whether the person undergoes lscs or labor. however there are some predictors of perinatal transmission i mean how can it get transmitted from mother to child if the viral load is more than 10 raised to 8 copies per ml then the risk of transmission is high from mother to child so uh, we start treatment of these hpv high viral load pregnant ladies at 28 or that is in the third trimester and the drug of choice nowadays is tenofovir and this treatment is continued for 2 to 3 months post delivery and does uh, this i have already mentioned does the mode of delivery very affect the perinatal trauma earlier there were some reports in uh, from the western literature that elective cesarean delivery could prevent the perinatal transmission but there have no been data on that so that's why it is not recommended breast feeding definitely should be advised there is no contraindication for breast feeding however some of these uh, uh, lesions that is cracked nick uh, nipple sorry however some of uh, the lesions of the uh, nipple that is cracked nipple mastitis abscess they should be they may contaminate the milk so that's why for transient the breast feeding has to be stopped treat these lesions and then the uh, breast feeding can be advised so to conclude friends the knowledge and treatment options have come a long way since discovery of this virus but in spite of all the research the optimal treatment options are far from perfect we still have not found the wonder drug to cure this disease what is known is that universal worldwide vaccination will significantly change the burden of this disease as has been seen in taiwan where the rate of hepatocellular carcinoma hepatitis b virus has dropped drastically with universal immunization in their country so thank you friends if there are any questions uh, you can uh, put it on the qa box where do i see the qa section this one yeah so one there are the chat box one yeah, question chat yeah. box no yeah i'll so i am just going through the questions uh, meantime i'll answer start answering push uh dr rajesh manwatkar he has asked a question post exposure prophylaxis is necessary if immunoglobulin given 
that is the post exposure prophylaxis see what happens is if the person has been vaccinated already mentioned in the slide that if the healthcare worker has been vaccinated earlier then there is no need to do anything if he or she knows their titers if it is if they don't know the titers then definitely uh, we should give vaccine but healthcare worker has not been vaccinated in the has not been vaccinated in the past then definitely they will require immunoglobulin then I think that is the only question till now. I'm waiting for another question. One more yeah. question, QA box. How much okay. duration this virus is active on surface? Yeah, Two it, it all, yeah it, <laughs> the virus is not very active. It can stay for few hours only outside the body. It is, hello, namaste. I'm Dr. Ashraf from Nepal. When should I start the treatment and when should I stop the treatment of positive patient? The answer is if uh, this is Dr. Ashraf from Nepal. When should I start treatment? This, the slide had already been put. HBSAG positive patients with ALT more than two times the upper lim limit of normal, we should start treating these patients. Now, when should I stop? The answer is very difficult because it all depends upon the E antigen status, E antigen positive, negative, what happens to the E antigen conversion. So the answer of stopping is very difficult here, but starting the treatment, the guidelines are very clear, but we should monitor these patients on a regular basis. In the initial stage only, we should mention to the patient that once we start treatment, usually the treatment is lifelong. And there is a, a question uh, about interpretation of uh, anti-HBC and HBV DNA loads in treatment initiation. Yeah, this is by Edwin Jones. The answer is that is in E antigen positive, HBV DNA more than 20,000 IU per ml or 1 lakh copies per ml. And in case of E antigen negative, it is 2,000 IU per ml. That is the cutoff of HBV DNA provided HBV DNA along with raised enzymes. So then only we start treatment. Suppose we have a scenario where the enzymes are normal and the HBV DNA is very high. Still this, this set of cases we don't treat because this person is in an immune tolerant phase. So now anti-HB core, IgM anti-HB core positivity means it's a acute hepatitis B. What, uh, what is a preferred drug for chronic act the drug of choices there are two either it is antikavir or tenofovir tenofovir alafenamide which is a new molecule that is TAF 25 mg and antikavir if it is a neo patient 0.5 milligrams or if it has been treated that is one milligram uh, per day if if a person is HPSG positive and E antigen negative, is he infective? Definitely, yes. There is one more question in the chat box. Hepatitis, yeah, hepatitis, yeah, hepatitis uh, B, uh, hepatitis B positive with HCC. Any use of HBV? The answer is uh, this is from Suman Balgandi. The answer is we should treat all these patients because. Even in HCC also, the rate of progression little slows down. Means there is, uh, we know that now there is no cure, but at least the uh, rate of cure, uh, I mean the rate of uh, further progression will be slowed down. We should treat all these patients along with the HCC management. Uh, actually, there are uh, some questions in the chat box and some in the QA box. So it's becoming difficult to see the questions here. Uh, I would request uh, everyone to put it, uh, Mr. Vasant, can you put a message to put it on the QA section rather than webinar yes, chat? Yes, I have put there, have put there sir. Yeah, because I am not able to, I will see some here also.
I don't think there are any more questions, Doctor. Yeah, there is one more. Uh, yeah, there, there, there was one question earlier, which was, which was asking like, uh, oh, what, what tests, means I got earlier, what tests do we do uh, regularly? See, regularly, three monthly interval, every three months, we do ALT. This is for, uh, for follow-up cases. I mean, patients who are in an inactive stage and whom we ask for investigations, ALT has to be done every three monthly. Ultrasound and serum AFP has to be done every six monthly. And if facility is there for fibro scan, it has to be done yearly. Yeah, and uh, then there is a, a question about the co-infection with HIV ACG. Uh, for tenofovir would be the drug of choice here because it has shown effect in HIV as well as uh, hepatitis B also. But here what we have to do is we have to find the viral load of the both the uh, thing because uh, HIV can alter the hepatitis B status and vice versa also. Uh, there is another question. How long should barrier contraception be used? I mean, is viral load important in this or NTHPS? See here, uh, Dr. Ashraf Hussain, he has asked this question. I would like to rephrase this question. Suppose what happens if husband is positive and wife is negative or vice versa? What has to be done is that for if one of the partner is positive, we should advise HBSAG testing of the other partner. And if the other partner is negative, immediately we should start vaccination for the recommendation that is zero one six months. And at ninth month, we should get the anti-HBS titer. This is very important. Knowing anti-HBS titer is very, very important because it will, it will indicate whether the va vaccine sh uh, schedule has been effective or not. So one uh, uh, earlier I had asked one question, how many of us are vaccinated and how many of us know our titers? If we ask the August gathering here, I'm sure that so people who have been vaccinated, if we have 100 people who have been vaccinated, 50 will not know their titers. So that's why it, uh, telling titers is very, knowing titers is very important. As far as the barrier contraception is concerned, it has to be used till we know the anti-HBS titer of the other partner. If the titers are good, that is anti-HBS antibody, then there is no need to use the uh, contrast uh, this one barrier contraception. Diet, diet has to be normal. Dr. Vijay Gowder has this. Uh, uh, diet has, uh, 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 diet definitely is a very important role in the progress. Once the disease starts progressing, that means if a person is already decompensated, then we have to advise them salt less diet. It, it need not be no salt. The, there is misconception that many people write on the prescription no salt. Actually, it should be salt, less diet, water restriction. Those are two, very important. And uh, there is role of HPV DNA. I have, uh, Sumant Balgandi has already asked. This has been answered earlier. Then uh, any uh, role of IgM total anti in the workup of newly detected cases. See, the I, role of IgM anti-HB core will come to, to know whether a person is having acute infection. And total anti, uh, total antibody, uh, this one, uh, HB core. You mean total anti-HB? No, if in the newly detected case, who is HPSAG positive, anti-HBS, that is antibody titer against surface antigen will not be detected. It is only for if anti-HBS detected, that means there are two scenarios. One is patient has been vaccinated. Second is patient has zero converted after treatment. If exposed time 
uh, gap between vaccine which should be given uh, this is by sumanth uh, balgandi actually uh, i couldn't understand the question if exposed time gap between vaccine and immunoglobulin which should be uh, given first if there is a uh, uh, immunoglobulin definitely has to be given first because this will act in the initial stage this is active while vaccine is a passive one yeah so edwin has asked uh, usg abdomen what to look for to initiate treatment ultrasound abdomen is done to detect either any cirrhotic changes whether there are sol in the liver so these are the uh, two things uh, and whether there are any other uh, this one signs like ascites those needs to be checked yeah so i have asked that uh, answered that one nthv core then there is then there is someone asked what medicines given to hpsg treatment i have already answered that tenofovir uh, or entecavir mm -hmm. no there is another question uh, any difference between recovery person titer and immunized person titer no the answer is uh, we cannot differentiate from the titers uh, recovery uh, when we uh, what we understand by the word recovery what we understand by the word recovery is that hp person is hpsg positive it is an after a particular interval say few years he becomes hpsg negative and then mounts anti hps titer that is called as total recovery that is s zero uh, zero conversion is uh, dr maksud sir from hubli has asked is vaccination uh, really important and and cost of the vaccination definitely is advised and this is for people who are hpsg negative it is definitely advised the cost of regimen nowadays we are getting the i, I want to highlight the company but uh, any good brands we can get the one dose of vaccine that is 1 ml for as low as 100 rupees within 100 rupees so if uh, if we take the cost of only vaccine alone we can get within 2 250 rupees for three doses of vaccine and apart from that the regular injection uh, cost whatever is there so it is uh, quite cheap nowadays then there is a question like uh, yeah see when we uh, when we do hbsg positive case either let it be at endoscopy or the uh, important thing is that these patients have to be posted last i mean we cannot have any other patients after we do this or we should have proper sterilization timing i mean which can run from any any time between 2 to 3 hours so better to do it as a last case it is right no the edwin has asked what is the what is significant titer sometimes the report says weekly hbsg positive no uh, uh, you you have asked two questions in this only see uh, what is significant anti hbs titers anti hps titers anything for of uh, for a non medical more than 10 for medical profession preferably more than 100 so this is the first question and it is important when we do the titers ideally the titers have to be done 3 months after the last dose of vaccination that is the time which will have the maximum titers suppose if a healthcare worker has taken vaccination 5 years back and if he does his titers now even if 
if he does his titers now and if it shows more than 100 or 150 then that is best if it shows so anything between 10 to 100 not to worry anything less than 10 even then they should not worry if the titers have been done after 5 years because there is something called as immunological memory that titer value may go on decreasing but this doesn't mean that the person is susceptible for uh, hepatitis b virus so to allay all these figure uh, uh, this one uh, doubts it is better we get the titers done 3 months after the last dose of vaccination here in the letter what we write is first dose is today that is zero second dose is after one month from today third dose is after uh, this one five uh, six months from the first dose so that becomes zero one six and we put a date suppose if if the person finishes say today that is 28th of may so june july august august 28th or 29th he should get the anti Uh, hbs titers so that is the ideal time and sometimes the report says weakly positive uh, uh, doubtful reports and all in that case do a qualitative test hbv qualitative so that will uh, clear the doubt if there is any further doubt then it is better we uh, uh, do it after one or two months so hbsg testing if uh, qualitative test is not available but quality if we do qualitative not quantity quality if we do qualitative test will indicate whether the person is infected with this hepatitis b or not then on that then there is uh, so mahindra kar swasini has asked if healthcare worker vaccinated but titers are low should they start pp this i have already answered if healthcare worker is vaccinated the titers are low then immunoglobulin need not be given they can be just given one shot of vaccine that is enough then uh, vaccine for b and action towards d actually d is a co infection that is rightly mentioned but d virus is hardly seen in india vaccination against b virus hepatitis b uh, vaccine then yeah then there is uh, what are different outcomes of hepatitis b hepatitis b uh, can go on to become chronic can land up in decompensated or compensated cirrhosis malignancy and uh, can they recover completely the answer is yes but the percentage is very minuscule naturally among 100 one per year will recover from this virus without any treatment and if we give uh, uh, treatment that is in the form of interferons then interferon is the only drug which has shown that hbsg uh, uh, positive becoming negative that is zero conversion in seen in uh, 6 to 8% of cases only as far as the concerned it is 2 to 3% so our end points in the treatment of hepatitis b definitely first is hpsag the lft is normalizing that is the first one what we intend to see second one is uh, undetectable dna third would be s zero conversion and last would be triple c dna but here thing is that we should aim at the first two or three points that is more than sufficient if person zero converts then that is the best for uh, these patients but the uh, percentage is very low i think i have uh, answered uh, almost all the questions yes doctor uh, i think there are no more questions now thank yeah. you doctor for patiently answering all the questions and yeah. sparing your valuable time
Thank and thank you for all doctors who attended the CME yeah. webinar and uh, uh, a lot of interesting questions. I think the session was very interesting, very informative for everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Sanjeev Chetney, once yeah. again. And uh, we appreciate your spending your time. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. And uh, you can even put in the this one, if they have any other doubts, they can uh, mail me at uh, sanjeevchetney at gmail.com, which I'll uh, answer to that. Yes. Okay. If yes. there are any any other questions remaining, and if uh, uh, because some might get because of this uh, chat as well as Q and A uh, boxes, I might okay. have missed on some of the questions. But uh, if some of the delegate wants to ask some other question, they can contact me on the email. I'll uh, I'll be happy to answer it. Do that, doctor, and do that. And for the information of all the attendees, the same uh, recording will be put on YouTube also. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thanks, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Microlab. Once again, and for taking all the efforts. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you sir. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Thanks, the whole micro team. Yes. Thanks. Sir. So I'll be leaving the meeting now. Yes. Thank you. I'll end the meeting. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. Bye. Bye.